is a difficult language, by the way. Norwegian. I try to uh, to catch some words or anything like that in the last two days, but. Patrick Vieira, welcome to Norway. Thank you. You have come from down from Tromsø, where you spent two days. I heard you had some problems sleeping up there in the light. Yes, it was quite difficult with the midday. I think uh, when you not get get used to it, it's quite difficult. But uh, but it was a good experience. Uh, you are representing Diambars, which we are very proud to uh, cooperate with. Uh, can you tell me a little about the idea behind Diambars? Yes, John Bars, thank you very much for, for your help and your hard work so far. Uh, John Bars is uh, using sport to promote education because we know that the future of, uh, of Africa has to go through the education and uh, what we want to do is uh, to say to the kids, we know that you have a dream to be a footballer, but as a footballer I know how difficult it is to be successful. So we just tell them, okay, we, we build all the facilities like in Europe and we will give you a chance to achieve your dream. But on the other side, what we're asking you is to go to school and try to have education. And, uh, and so far the result has been fantastic. The kids have been responding really well and, uh, and we are really proud of uh, what we achieved so far. All football interested people in Norway have read about two Diambars boys uh, who have been playing in Tromsø the last year. Uh, we have uh, Kara and Sis at Tromsø and, uh, and I spent two days over there because the last time I saw them play was in, uh, in Senegal. And uh, spending the two days with them was, uh, was quite good because I see them grow up as a person and as a, as a human being. That was really important because uh, as a player, with all the good players around them, good people around them, I know that they will improve as a player. But um, I was quite surprised how they develop as a man, as a person, and uh, and that just shows us that uh, that the hard work that we put through through the years pay uh, pay out. Patrick, a few years ago, we were lucky to have 30 of your boys from Diamba, Senegal, visiting us here in Norway. Uh, they spent a week at my place in, in Drebak actually and also they visited us here at Fomus Waltning. What struck me then was how polite and eager these young boys were. This is the, uh, the basis, I think, uh, respect, uh, to listen and uh, be generous. And, uh, and that's what we, uh, we try to, uh, to make them understand. And, uh, and uh, when they come into Norway, uh, for the uh, Norway Cup. They've been really, uh, really exciting. They've been learning a lot. Some of them was talking with some kids from different country uh, in English. And, uh, and it was quite impressed how quick they can, uh, they can learn the language. So being away from Africa was, uh, was a fantastic experience for them. What does it mean for you to work with the Ambars? It means a lot because I left Senegal when I was eight years old and uh, I always wanted to go back to, uh, to Senegal to try to do something. But um, I didn't find what I can do for the, for the, for the country and especially for the kids. And um, through my career I met Jimmy Adjuboko, Bernard Lama. They had this project uh, that they want to do in, in Senegal. So when they proposed to me that project I straight away said yes because going back to Senegal with that project who concern the game that I love, concern the kids that I love as well, and concern the future of, uh, of Africa, that means education. So the three aspects of what I think is really important for me was in that project. So to be part of John Bart was, uh, was fantastic for me. So going back to Senegal after 20 years with this project um, make me really proud. You've had some remarkable results in Senegal, both in terms of sports and in terms of, of academic results. Uh, also now, uh, it's been two years that you've been running in South Africa. Can you tell us a little about the, the um, experiences you've had? We've got uh, around 120 kids and uh, we opened the second one in, uh, in South Africa where we got 40 kids and uh, in the next few months we will open the, the women's section. That will be really interesting as well. But um, we've got eight or nine of them who's playing in the Olympic 
national team of Senegal. We've got Kara who has been selected in the first team of Senegal for the first time. And uh, overall we, we have five, six of them who will be in the university. Um, some of them will pass the, the degree. So we know how we can be successful. And, uh, and the result we have in the last 10 years was, uh, was, was good. Because the first generation was now 21, just came out. And, uh, and we are really happy with the results we, we've got so far. Well, we know that uh, the school is self-sufficient economically after five years. So what you need help for is the five investing years. Uh, also, we know that the kids have had some remarkable academic results when they finished their baccalaureate. Yes, and um, the average percentage of the country uh, was uh, around 55, 56. And at John Bounce, we had like 70, 80 percent of success. And that's just show that we're doing the right stuff. And, uh, and I think when you work so hard, like Jimmy and Bernard have been doing it, and Saya, of course, in the last few years, and you see the result in the end, that makes you really proud as well, because you feel like you give back to the country uh, what, uh, what really football give, give us. I've also heard that when some kid loses his enthusiasm, they send you down to regain their uh, fight for the sports and for the school. What is that? Because we know how kids sometimes can be really um, taking things for, for granted. And um, when they've been really successful, they, uh, they lost their mind a little bit. But having the experience how important it is to f keep his feet on the ground is always good for me sometimes to go around and make them understand that, uh, that there's things more important than football. And, uh, and I hope one day that when I will get too old that the one like Kara who has been successful will take my place and encourage young kids to, uh, to do better. How can Norwegians uh, help you in your effort to, to help Africa? I think to you, um, <clears throat> there's always uh, the John Bass website, I think, where we can go and, uh, and there's all the all the information to, uh, to help uh, to help a John Bass because our target is we want to develop John Bass in most of the country in, uh, in Africa and for that we need money and we need uh, to raise as much as we can because of course there is a, a cost and, uh, and we need a lot of support and we receive a lot already from, uh, from Norwegian people and, uh, and we are never going to thank them, uh, thank them enough. The first five years of building the uh, Ambars Institute in a country is a heavy investment and you need support for that. But I understand that it's self-sufficient after five years in terms of running costs are covered by the, the income that you make as an institute. The, the really important is the first, uh, the first five years, I will say, because this is where we will need the money to build the facilities. This is when we will need the money to, uh, to invest so when we receive the first two generations of the kids that uh, they will have everything that they will start studying and they will start training at the same time. So the first five years are really, really important for the development of, uh, of the concept. Thank you very much Patrick Vieira. We are very proud to be cooperating with you and we wish you all the good luck in your future, both career and work for the kids in Africa.